Hello everyone. Welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky and the surrounding area. Today, in honor of Black History Month, we're talking about Dr. Alexander V. Boston, an African-American dentist who, along with his wife, worked tirelessly for years to bring health care to the mountains of Pike County. Dr. Boston was born in Oviedo, Florida in 1893 as the oldest son among 10 children born to Prince Butler and Julia Boston. The elder Boston was an early founder of the citrus industry in the area. In 1913, Alex enrolled as a medical student at Mahari Medical and Dental College in Nashville, Tennessee. That's also where he would meet his wife, Julie, who would become a registered nurse. Just two weeks into his final year, he became ill and had to withdraw. Before re-entering school, he worked as a coal miner and, according to a memoir written by his wife, Julie, he admired the hard-working miners. She said it was then that he became determined to do something to help these men. He returned to school in 1917, but he had to withdraw again as he was drafted into the United States Army. He was assigned to government services and in 1918 made his first trip to Pike County where he was sent with a group of medics to provide medical care in Appalachia. He fell in love with the place and the people and promised himself he would return to help. After completing his dental training, he opened a practice in Louisville, but the mountains were calling. He and his family moved to Virgie on a small farm and on Christmas Day in 1929, he drew up plans for his ultimate goal, a modern hospital to serve the miners and their community. He wanted a hospital that would serve anyone regardless of race, of status, and one at which any qualified person could work. He began working toward this goal by walking through the mountains with a smile and a black medical bag. He provided dental care and took various items such as timber and livestock as payment. At one time, the Bostons had accumulated a herd of 260 cattle. They seemed to be nearly ready to begin construction on their hospital, but several obstacles appeared in their path. A drought left the animals without water and their crops failed in the field. The Great Depression and the resulting banking crisis robbed them of their savings. They had accumulated lumber for construction, but it was lost when the mill burned. Finally, that winter, the doctor himself fell prey to an illness and it took him two years to recover. Most people would have abandoned the project, but Dr. Boston held true to his mission. He continued to walk through the mountains of Eastern Kentucky and Southwest Virginia. He traveled far and wide and became known as the walking dentist. In addition to dentistry, the scarcity of health care meant that he set many broken legs and his wife delivered many babies. They helped the sick regardless of their ability to pay and they continued to accept payments in goods, including eggs, chickens, and vegetables. Miss Boston wrote that he would leave their home on foot in all kinds of weather and would sometimes be gone for weeks. She and the children would watch for him from their front porch as the sun went down, hoping that would be the day he returned. Sometimes, he came home with his clothes nearly frozen to his body. More than once, his boots were so frozen that they had to be warmed in a tub of tepid water to remove them safely. Construction finally began in July of 1948. Community Memorial Hospital officially opened on May 1st of 1950. To fully realize the extraordinary nature of this hospital, note that the hospitals in Louisville only began desegregating in 1948. Hospitals across the country remained segregated until requirements in Medicare resulted in almost all being desegregated in 1965. The 60-bed hospital located in eastern Kentucky was so novel that it drew the attention of the Louisville Courier-Journal in 1952. 
A lengthy article noted that it had 26 employees, with four being African American. The chief of staff was Dr. M. K. Mantooth, a full-blooded Cherokee, and there were five other doctors on staff. The Bostons had arranged for the training and education of at least the first four nurses, Lucille Hamby, Lucille Adkins, Naomi Stiltner, and Lexi Adkins. Doc Boston drove them to Louisville himself to take their state board exams and all passed. Miss Hamby told the Appalachian News Express that she owed a 27-year nursing career to Dr. Boston's kindness and belief in her. Initially, the hospital had a contract with the United Mine Workers, but it ultimately closed in 1957. It seems likely that it lost this contract when the UMWA began building its own hospitals in the mid-1950s. Miss Boston wrote that they nearly secured a loan during these difficult financial times, but that it ultimately fell through because of the color of their skin. In the last several years at the hospital, Dr. Boston was no longer physically able to treat many patients, but he and his wife spent hours in the hospital visiting the patients and helping to keep their spirits up. According to one patient, a young girl was severely burned and died after spending days in the hospital. No bill ever arrived. On another occasion, it is reported that a young man was arrested for theft. Dr. Boston bailed him out, canceled him, and ultimately paid his way through medical school. These and other kindnesses did not go unnoticed, and the people of the Virgie area gained great affection and respect for the Bostons. A 1997 story in the Louisville Courier Journal stated that people from the area still got teary-eyed when talking of their kindness. And similar stories and kind words about the couple have recently been shared on social media. Even after the hospital closed, Virgie remained home for Dr. Boston. Though they reportedly owned property in Florida, Nashville, and Louisville, they remained in their little mountain community because they liked it and the people that lived there. Doc Boston passed in 1967 at the age of 74. His funeral was held in the auditorium at Virgie High School. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com. If you have any stories that you'd like to share about Doc Boston or others who also contributed to our community, we'd love to hear from you. Please comment on the video or email us at tourism at